Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> right here <laughs> really here live and in the studio <laughs> and thank you for joining me again today um i really appreciate it and thank you for giving me a little break so i could work on the fall festival and leah thank you um from missouri um she says hi and then roxanne was one of the first ones to join us we really love your name we dig it in fact we broke out in song roxanne for you so anyway thank you for taking time out of your busy life and joining me, Carla Jerome, here at the Grace Company um, for our live Tuesday section. So I was thinking about what we should do today for our live section, and I had a lot of great emails um, while we were gone um, on hiatus, and I thought it would be really important to answer some of those questions or some of those um problems that you were facing as you were quilting and you sent me emails on. And most of them had to do with the automation, in fact, all of them. Um, and so I wanted to come back and go through the automation. And I'm going to take a little more time and go through a few more details um, about the automation, showing you the screens and the help files and introducing you where to go and how to get them. Um, and then also showing you a few little key features on each of the ways to quilt using Panagraph. So I've got a lot to show you today. And so I'm gonna jump in and introduce you to the automation. But first of all, before I jump in, I wanna talk about preparing our quilts for quilting. And what are the key points that I could urge you to start um, doing to make your quilting process that much easier and without a lot of frustrations. So the number one thing I want you to start doing if you're not is to make your backing and your batting wider and longer than your quilt. This is even if you're not using the automation and your free motion quilting. And I know we don't wanna waste any fabric whatsoever, but this will allow you, give you kind of that little extra leeway that you need as you're quilting. So if something's not quite right or it's not rolling exactly nice and straight, it just gives you that little excess that you need to fix those problems. And if you need to turn your quilt, and you like turning your quilt, first of all, you don't have to, but if you like turning your quilt and quilting the borders and everything, it gives you that little extra that you can pin to the leaders, and it makes it a lot easier. So that's the number one thing. And thank you from the Netherlands. It's Jolanda. I hope I said it, but I'm not going to pronounce your last name. Thank you for joining me today. So just remember... The key to a great quilt is making sure that your backing is wider and longer. And if it's a piece backing, an important part of um, sewing the pieces together is cutting off the selvages because the selvages, um, they're a tight, tighter weave. And so if you're just leaving them on and ironing them open, it's going to sew in um, because it is a tighter weave. So you want to cut them off and then uh, make sure that you're not using such a tight, tight stitch, sewing them together so it lays nice and flat. Now, you can iron the seams open or to one side. I don't care. Just make sure that they're ironed and nice and flat and move it to one side or the other. That's totally up to you, but those are the first couple of things that for nice quilting and quilts, just make sure that that is larger, wider, and if you're piecing your backing, because I love a nice piece back. Okay, so that's the number one thing. So I wanted to just jump in and talk to you about as you're pinning your quilt on. I felt like it was really important. And I don't like the pinning process any more than you do, but with the leaders, it really does, it's a time saver. So if you have your center marked on your, your backing and your center marked um, on the front rail, then you are gonna be able to pin your, your backing on really quick. But don't leave too large of a gap in between. Those gaps in between, if I could just, can you do a little close up? If you have too large of a gap, say I didn't have this pinned here, as you're tightening it, it's going to roll unevenly. 
So make sure that as you're pinning the backing on, that you're pinning, you don't have to pin it really close, but just make sure it's nice and close enough together that as you're pulling it, see how I've got my pins positioned just every so often that it's not, as I'm tightening it, it's not pulling it apart, okay? So just make sure that you're pinning it so it rolls nicer and straighter. Um, now, if you have those gaps, fill them in, okay? We wanna fill in those gaps. All right, so that was the other thing I wanted to talk to you about. Um, then just making sure that you have all the tools necessary for that quilt that you're working on. I have one right now that I am really struggling. I want a free motion quilt on it, but I'm trying to come up with a design. And I think I've wasted so much paper <laughs> trying to come up with a design for it, but it's a process. So take your time and enjoy the process. And if it's something, a design that you're just not liking or it doesn't resonate with you, um, don't do it because uh, you don't want to unpick. And I'm just telling you that if you don't like something that you started quilting, don't let it go past that point um, and, and live with it. Because you can stop it and unpick it really quick. So if you're even with the automation, if you find that the design just doesn't work, uh, stop it immediately and don't go on. Okay, there are lots of times that I tell myself, yes, I can live with it, but really I'll get home from here and it's like, yeah, I can't, so I'm unpicking. So learn from my mistakes. That's what I'm here for, is to save you the heartache and the headache. So let me jump into the automation. So I have opened it up because I wanted to show you a few key items um, as we jump in and we talk about the automation. And number one, because we move tablets around here from machine to machine, machine, um, you, I want, and even if you're upgrading to a new machine, this is something that you have to do. If you started out with the automation, say, on a 15-inch machine, and you're upgrading to like a 21, you're going to have to go in and change the settings to tell the automation what machine you're using. So when you open up the automation, um, let me just get out of here, you're going to go to the help. The help is right here at the top right, right next to the exit. So you just tap on the help and then all your help tools and videos and will show up. Now, we want to come down over here to settings. So if you tap on settings, it'll open up the settings screen. And in the settings screen, and this is another feature, that if you're moving from a hoop style frame to a rolling frame, you're gonna have to change the frame style as well. So I'm using a rolling frame because I'm using a Q-Zone queen frame and it has poles that roll. It's not a hoop frame, so I wanna keep that. But notice here I have the uh, automation set for 21 Pro. Well, I'm using a Qunique 19, so I'm just gonna quickly change that and I'm going to come down here where it says change sewing machine model right here in the blue. It's kind of like a link that opens up that window because it's in blue. And then I want to find my Cunique and then I want to change it to Cunique 19. And now it's changed on the screen and I can say okay. But I want to get out of my automation completely and come back in. So I'm just going to tap on my X and I'm gonna tap out of the automation because I wanna show you, talk to you about setting your safe area. Um, Marie and I had a nice little chat and these are kind of the features that we felt like um, we needed to go over and we needed to be really slow and precise and let you talk back to us and us talk to you so that we could get this down correctly. Um, <clears throat> all right. So when you're turning on your automation, notice that I double tapped on my Quilter's Creative Touch icon. You'll see that a screen will show up. And if you have not opened it up in simulation mode, it will say, ask you to make sure that your needle is up and to move your machine to the center of the frame. And the reason it's asking you to do this because it doesn't want it at the sides so that it can engage and recognize that it's free and uninhibited so it can get its accesses. So we want to say, okay, and you can hear it. See it moving? 
So it's just checking to make sure that it can move the different directions. All right, and don't, just ignore this. I'm just saying that one version of my gold features is expired, and I'm just going to hit cancel. It's okay. All right, so here is my opening screen, and I am using today, I'm using Quilters Creative Touch 5 Pro. Um, so I'm going to jump in, and the first thing I want to talk to you about is um, setting your safe area. All right, so I'm going to go in here to my Select and Sew, because it's when you're opening up either the Select and Sew, Panograph, or one of the gold features that's going to ask you to set your safe area. Now, the safe area is not your quilting area. It's the area that you will move that surrounds the, the quilting area. So you want to make your safe area wider and longer, just like your backing, okay? It's surrounding your quilt top, but the safe area is acting like the backing. Now, you don't want to sew off your backing at all, so you're not going to set your safe area up and off, but you want to set it wide enough for those allowances, okay? For if the quilt's not rolling exactly straight. So know that you don't have to be exactly, when you're setting your safe area, you don't have to be exactly on your quilt top. You want to move it up and off your quilt top all the way back onto your backing. Notice how far I am off because I made my backing wide enough so I can do up and off. So I'm, I'm ready to set my safe area. I'm gonna go into my select and sew. And now it's asking. Now don't look at the picture because the picture's a little deceiving. And I figured that that's what everybody's doing. They're looking at the picture and deciding that you, this is where the safe area needs to be. Now, we want it to be up and off, just like our backing. And we're gonna move up to the top left, up off our backing next to our take-up pole. The take-up pole is the pole that goes through the sewing machine. All right, and I'm going to tap on this window right here where it says top left, just tap on it. Okay, now I set my width of my safe area. Now I'm gonna just move across my quilt and then I'm just gonna pull it down up and off onto my backing again and down to the bottom right. And notice that I'm not right there on my, on my quilt top, I'm up and off on my backing and I'm setting my safe area. Okay. So now I set my safe area and I've set it wide enough that it's going to allow me to roll my quilt and I'm not going to need to reset it. Now, if you set it <laughs> too narrow, it's going to let you know. And that's a good thing. It lets us know. And there are in the toolbox throughout, you'll see a little toolbox. If you tap on the toolbox, you can reset your safe area very easily. Um, so that's how you set your safe area. So um, let's just go in and let's just quickly talk about um, the different placements. Okay, I just picked a random design, okay? It's not one that you need to use, but notice over here, this is the select and sew screen. This is the area that if you wanna quilt block by block by block, this is what the, the screen you'll use. If you wanna quilt a triangle block or a rectangle or diamond, there are different placement methods to use when you're placing your design. So I noticed here I have pulled my design, but over here in this section here are all our placement methods. So if I tap on this all, it's gonna show me. It shows me I have a one point placement method. One point is a placement that you would use, say if you were sewing a circle design in a circle area. Um, there are ways to size that place, uh, size it and make it sized correctly for that circle. Um, but that's the best placement method. And sometimes it's the best placement for any design. Um, you wanna fit within even a square. So a circle design in a square, if you find the center, you can place it. So that's something that you can play around with. Then we have two point where two points gives you two points to place a pantograph or a border design or sashing. Um, then you have block. Block placement gives you two points, so it will size it equally. And then you have four points. You get four nodes to place that. You have tilted block. Kind of gives you an odd angle for any of your odd blocks that you have. 
triangle. Now this is a, a square design, a circle design and a triangle. So let's go up and select a triangle pattern. But notice here, I have a 90 degree triangle. This one is a 60 degree. So if we want to change our triangle setting, you just tap on this little triangle button right here. And I'll change from, uh, this is a now a 90 to a 60. So if you pull a triangle design and you have the wrong triangle placement, it's fine. You can just fix it with the touch of a button. All right, and then we have on point and cubed. And then you can just go back up and play with them and see what they're like. So there's two point and here's one point. And one point you have start and center and then corner. All these placements are in the help files and I wanna show you how to get to the help files. So let's go over here, come back up to the help files and notice along the top here, you have number one, pantograph. Number one, select and sew. So I was just in the select and sew screen and I want to know what each of the placements do. So I'm gonna open up my select and sew placement methods and it's gonna open up that help file that I spent all of COVID and it's going to go through the screen. It's going to talk about the safe area. Um, it's going to, as we come down here, it's going to talk about select and slow flower placement screen. And then I'm going to go through all of the different placements and talk to you about what the screen and the buttons do. And so if you don't know what the buttons do and you want to, the help files are a great, great way to get to know and understand it. Then after you understand what the buttons do, then I go through and show you how they actually work and apply them. Um, and then Annalise has a question. She says, how do you know that your belt is right when you use your QCT5? That belts are not too tight or too too tight or too loose. Okay, all right. Um, you want them pretty tight. You almost can't get them too tight, but you can get them threaded incorrectly. And previously, I did a video showing you the correct way to thread it. And I think we just showed that video just not too long ago. But if you want to know the correct way to thread it, just make sure you follow your instructions. And sometimes it can be a little hard to see, but on that video, I showed you the right ports to thread it through. And sometimes you can get it upside down um, and facing the wrong direction. So make sure you're following your instructions and then we'll kind of pull, try to pull up that video if we can, Bryant, and find it and, um, and see if you can watch that and get some good helps. So I just had a couple other ladies comment that that was very helpful for him, them in setting up their automation. So know that the belts need to be really, really tight. See, these are really tight on that one and the belt on top as well. So you have two belts. You have the bottom belt that goes across your frame. Then you have your top belt that is on your machine. And so they do different things. They're like your encoders on your um, machine. So there's the side to side movement and the front to back movement. And it gives you your access so you can smoothly. Um, yes, we have a lot going on today. Santa's elves are working out there very quickly because we're getting containers in. So if it gets a little noisy, tell me to speak up. All right, so just make sure that you're threading your belts correctly. Um, and that notice how this the teeth are down, but on this belt here, if you can look over here, I'll have Ryan over here do a little close up. Notice that the belts the teeth are up, so they're they're threaded a little differently. But notice they're really quite tight. All right, so. Just make sure that you go through the help files. I, I promise you, you will learn something. I don't know if you'll learn everything, but you will learn something, because I did. <laughs> it was a good um, process of learning for me. 
Um, and, and it'll just help you understand how the little placement nodes work in relation to the automation so you can place your designs more accurately and easily. Um, and then at the very end, I have you learn and go through the process of making borders and corners and setting the blocks. And so anyway, so let me just get out of this really quick. And then in the pantograph, I just want to go back up here to the help. I've done the pantographs the same way, okay? So pantograph is going from the home screen and explaining what each of the buttons across the top are. And then number two, we go through the different placements and how to size your, your quilt correctly using the different like methods of pantograph. Then I have you use those methods and actually sew. So I go through the whole process with you. Um, and, and it really will be helpful. Um, and even if you don't understand, so um, Brenda, she says, I missed the beginning. How do you get out of simulation mode? Okay. So when you get um, come into automation, okay, and you had it, had it in simulation mode, it will say, do you want to continue in simulation mode? And you're going to say no, because you don't want to continue in simulation mode. And then the screen will pop up asking you if your needle is up, okay? But you have to make sure that your USB cord is plugged in so it knows that it's connected to the automation. And when that is plugged in, then it will bring that little pop up up asking you if your needle. If you don't have that, mm, then it's gonna look for it and you're gonna still be in simulation mode. So make sure that this one is plugged in here and back here to your automation. And I go through that as well on that other video. So I show you completely top to bottom, out of the box, how to set up your automation. And so go back and see if you could find that video and, and watch it, it will really help you. Okay, so my next area I wanted to talk to you about um, is, um, I've talked to you about the safe area, is the pantograph, okay? So I went into select and sew, and I showed you a little bit about the placements, but pantograph, it seems to be a struggle for us to understand what pantograph method we want to use for different quilts. So I wanted to jump in and talk to you about that. So we're going to open up our pantograph screen here. And notice that I have all my tools across the top. It has a wonderful ruler in here. Um, and you can save your design um, for quilting. Um, but then notice down here, you have, just like you did in the Select and Sew, you have different methods of using pantographs. So right here, when I'm not going to go into the advanced, I'm just going to talk about Power Panto. So I'm going to talk about Power Panto is the fastest, easiest way to quilt an edged edge design because it does all the calculations for you. Um, okay, so Bunny is asking, will I ever show how to place patterns that need to be staggered? Um, yes, in fact, actually, there's some features coming up that you didn't hear it from me, but you're going to love. And um, so they will be on new updates coming up. And Marie is quickly testing them to make sure everything's correct. But hmm, Bunny, good question. And look for it. I don't know how much longer it will be, but the staggerer will be there. Okay. And I will go into more detail. So Bunny, I ask you because I'm going to quickly go over a few items and I want to spend more detail on it. So if you will uh, email me. And maybe I could spend a little more time on the stagger next week. So if you will email me, Carla with a K, K-A-R-L-A at graceframe.com. Uh, I'll get my, my wording back, okay? Graceframe.com and email me and let me know specifically what, what mode, what method you want me to show it. Hey, I'd be more than happy to. All right? So make sure you email me and remind me. And I'll introduce that next week when I talk about this great feature I'm going to talk about next week. But I'm going to wait till the end, so you have to stay with me and my diatribe of talking about automation. Okay, so 
actually, we're going to start in Power Panto. And like I was saying, Power Panto is the quickest, easiest way to sew a quilt edge to edge all the way down. Okay? So when you're quilting an edge to edge quilt for setting up your quilt, you always want to remember um, if you're going to sew off the quilt top just a little bit, always tack your quilt down, your quilt top down as you're quilting. Number two important item, okay? So let's set up a quilt and notice right here, my total width is 32 and my total height is 16. Those aren't my quilt top measurements. Those are the measurements that I got from setting my safe area. So I cannot quilt um, a quilt that's larger or wider, I should say, wider than 32 inches. I cannot quilt the quilt and the height is all relative because you're going to put that in. Um, so it can be longer, but it can't be any wider than 32. So I'm going to take my quilt and I'm going to design it 25 inches wide by 25 inches long. Really quick, really easy. Now I'm going to go in and select my design and show you what Power Panto does. Now I am in the triangle designs, but notice across the top here, we have different file folders. And in these different file folders, there's patterns or designs for specific use. So we have block, continuous line, triangle, border sets. I'm going to go to my continuous line and I'm going to select, oh, let's just select little Daisy here. Okay, so notice it's taken that design and taken my measurements that I used and filled it in. Now these are gonna be pretty big Daisy. <laughs> They're gonna be about eight inches. Oops, eight inches, because that's the pattern height. Now, if I want to adjust the pattern height, all I have to use is this plus or this minus. The plus will enlarge it, the minus will shrink it. So I just wanna shrink it and make it smaller. So play around with the screen and see what the pattern or the design looks like. Okay, so you know what? I could even fill it in a little more or I could make it a little larger. So my pattern height is about 3.5 inches. And that seems pretty good. And then you will want to just play with the flip buttons to see what they do. Just play with them, have fun. This is your chance to just get to know the automation. All right, so now I'm back, okay? Now, right now in Power Pantel, you don't have the opportunity to stagger. Not yet, okay, Bunny? Just give us a little more time. It's coming and it's pretty dang cool because um, Brad's quickly working on it. And like I said, it's gonna be a very cool feature coming up. So you guys get to be the first to hear that. All right, so this is the quickest way to quilt and sew. Um, and you can vertically, if you're using a hook frame, vertically space them so they're not so close together. You don't want to do them too much, but you do want to give a little bit of spacing because as you're shifting your quilt side to side, front to back, you'll get a little off. And this vertical spacing kind of gives you that, just like your backing being wider and longer, gives you that little leeway, you know, to have a little bit off. Um, and so it's gonna quilt straight, and you just, it's gonna look a little unstraight. So that's what the magic of the automation, it really does a nice job in helping you set your placements to work with how you are quilting. It's awesome. So that is Power Pantle. So it's going to take your measurements and fill in the design, size it, the length and the width, and then you can adjust that sizing to what pleases you. Okay, let's go in to EZ. Now EZ, I'm gonna use the same measurements, okay? Um, my quilt is gonna be 25 inches wide by 25 inches long. EZ is best used when you know what size you want that design to be. So taking into calculations, I want my design to be five inches because I think the five inches will fill in nice, um, nicely. So I just want to put in, I want to get my pattern height, my design 
And let's just do the daisy again. Okay, so now I have just one big daisy, but I want my pattern height to be five. So it's gonna take that calculation there, the pattern height that you want your design to stay and be, and it's going to fill in how many um, designs across and how many designs down. So um, it automatically, Brenda, does the rows for you. So it decides for you um, how many rows down to make it nice and even. So that is the beauty of EZ. Um, I wish, okay, Janet George says, my wish is to still be able to create a partial row at the top of EZ mode. Okay, your wish may not come true right away, but we'll put that out there, Janet, <laughs> okay? Um, so anyway, that's the easiest way to, if you know the size. So if you have blocks that are like five inches and you just want to keep it nice and straight, everything, just think about the sizing because sizing does really matter and proportions matter on your quilt. You don't want them too big. You don't want them to look too wonky. And sometimes you want them more dense. Sometimes you want them a little larger. So you that's the beauty of it. You can decide what you want. So if I changed my pattern height to say 3.5, it's going to adjust it. And that's what it's going to do. And it's going to say aspect ratio. And now it's going to pull it out. So it just kind of stretched it from edge to edge, and that's when I stretched it from center. So this has the center button. It kind of centered it all the way down this quilt, but I wanted to sew off the edges, so I wanted to go from edge to edge, so I just tapped on the center, and it changed it, and it stretched that design across. So that's what it does. Play with the automation and simulation mode. It doesn't hurt you to tap the buttons and play around, do different size quilts to see what they look like. Now. The last one gives you a little bit more control. You get to decide how many rows down and how many designs across, and that's basic mode. So I'm, I'm not gonna pick my design first. I have to change it. And I'm going to go into basic. Okay, so with basic, I'm just gonna choose the same design. And I get to decide by using the plus and minus keys over here on the left, how many patterns across, and how many rows down? So I want five across, five down, you decide. Okay, then you get to play with your alternate rows and this is when you can stagger. See, notice how it staggered in. If you play around with it, you'll get to know and understand how it works and what you like. Okay, so that's the beauty of basic, is that you really have more control and deciding the sizing, how many designs across, how many rows down. So that's what makes it, that's what makes each of these methods different, okay? And how you use them. So let's just take this over and let me just do a, a little simple design. Um, all right. So we're just gonna do that and we're going to um, go over here and we're gonna tap on, not place as a single pattern, we're gonna sew in zones. And it's gonna ask me to save my design, I'm not going to, but you should save your design. Then I'm just gonna go in and notice, I have all these little trim lines and everything. Well, I wanted to show you one specific thing, okay? I wanted to come in here and show you zone manager. So I want to come here and show you zone manager because it's kind of like this mystery area um, that you don't know is really there. And it looks kind of daunting because it gives you this warning screen. It's okay, you can tap on it, okay? Because we haven't started quilting yet, okay? And just say opening zone manager allows you to select which zone to place. However, it will also reset your current placement. So we're not placing our design yet. I haven't placed it. And um, so what I wanted to do was just open it up and show you zone manager. Okay, this shows you I'm going to have two zones, one, two, and it's gonna show you that my first zone here, what's gonna quilt in this first zone here, but also it has over here different placement methods. 
So notice it says right now it's four point placement method. If I tapped on this, it's gonna change it to center. Center is the best placement method if you're using um, a rolling frame. Next week, I'm gonna go into more detail about four point placement and show you how great it is because it's so underutilized um, and we're even finding more and more ways of quilting using four point placement. So I'm really excited about that. So I'll just jump in this. So you can change it from center to four point if you want to. And center is if you wanted to quilt edge to edge all the way down. And this is on a rolling frame, not a hoop frame. Four point allows you to, if you have a border and you want to quilt inside the border area, a beautiful pantograph, four point is what you'd use. And I'll show you more of that next week. So I'm going to keep you on your toes and make you join me next week to see all these other great features, okay? So not right below it, it has zone start position, okay? You can either alternate or you can sew from the left. It doesn't matter, okay? Then you have sewing direction. You can have it uniform, and it shows you the picture, the uniform. So it's sewing across, sewing across, sewing across, or it's sewing across, and it comes back, and then it sews across. So it's back and forth, okay? Then you have one more, and then it's just continuous. With continuous, if you are not sewing a design off the edge of your quilt, and you do not want that little line sewn to the next pattern to go across, then do not choose continuous. Um, because you wanna make sure that that little line is sewn up and off your quilt. So if you were doing um, a quilt with the intersection, you wouldn't wanna use continuous, okay? You would wanna use either uniform or back and forth. Well, even back and forth, I don't want, I want it to stop, okay? So just know that. So anyway, that's a little bit about zone manager. And you know, you can see I changed it. So now it's just going to sew, but it's gonna stop there. If I wanted to optimize it, I could. There are so many ways to quilt. Um, the automation is just one of them. And so I want you to recognize that all of these tools are at your fingertips. And, and it's, it's just such an awesome opportunity and a time for you to choose how you like to quilt. Some quilters just like the automation and that's what they're gonna quilt, or how they're gonna quilt all the time. Um, I like the free motion and the automation. I like using the different tools and having different ways. And I also like exploring different ways of quilting. So next week, join me when I show you four point placement. And if you have some questions that you need me to specifically answer, email me. Again, my email is Carla with a K, Carla at graceframe.com and ask me those questions and I'm really gonna try to answer them because we're all in this together and you are my quilting group and you're going to help me elevate all of our quilting and we're all gonna get there to that next level and together. And so just thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And join me next week when I show you more details about four point placement. Very excited about that. And then let me just tell you what's coming up. For the cutie frame, I'm going to show you the automation, um, how to set it up on the cutie frame and using your domestic machine with the automation on the hoop frame. So very excited about what I have to show you. And even if you don't have the system, the automation is fun and so easy to do and, and it's just so engaging. So you won't want to miss out. So join me next time. I appreciate it. We're back live. Yahoo! We'll see ya. Take care. Bye-bye.